it does make me kind of go, do I want to go back in the sea? Dolphins, jellyfish, squid, and now hawks as well, from the, attacking from the air. It's a full-on assault, isn't it? Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast, probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broder. We're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Dawson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? I'm good, Christopher. I have um, spent a good few days recovering from what can only be described as a karaoke experience. My voice Ooh. is only just coming back to uh, where it needs to be uh, as a person who lives and dies by his voice. Um, I just sang Celine Dion a little bit too oh. loud, Chris. It's, oh, uh, and, and I also, um, I was with uh, my partner and, and her friends um, and one of the friends really wanted to sing. Do you know the song Olivia Rodrigo's Vampire? Oh, um, uh, no. No, I don't. You dry like a goddamn... It's basically a short tune uh, for pop music. Uh, you know, just, mm, you know mm. nice, you know, fun, uh, thoughtful lyrics, etc. But, um, yeah, uh, her friends uh, really wanted to um, sing the song and film it for um, their daughter mm. uh, to sort of say, hey, I'm, I'm a cool dad, I don't know what's what. <laughs> um, and I didn't know that. I'd had a few too many um, Proseccos, and I just proceeded to... <laughs> sing all over their fine performance but nobody told me chris but i feel very guilty that i've ruined someone's karaoke performance that was supposed to be filmed for um their daughter oh. i was just like i was <laughs> i was Jesus. just singing away having a lovely old time where do you even where can you do karaoke in the uk is there bars it's, you, you know what there's, there's not that many karaoke places in i mean i don't think there's any karaoke places in south end near where i live uh, which is a real, I think, a real shame and a blind spot, I think. Um, maybe there's some kind of performing... You should open a restaurant. ...PRS right? that you have to kind of... Open your own karaoke well, I think bar. They, I, think, I think pubs have them, but I think a karaoke bar that just does that, bearing in mind there's loads of, like, golfing experiences and, you know, special darts. Uh, darts are quite big at the, at the moment, at this moment in time. You know, like like sort of pub games experiences mm. that are all, like, you know, lasery and, 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 and you know, um, LED lights all over the gaff um, and, and drinking. But, like, they don't have, like, a specific karaoke place, so you kind of have to go to Liverpool Street for Lucky Voice, which is... Um, but I imagine it's probably something to do with PRS. It's probably quite prohibitively expensive that people don't want to get involved I with. I just don't think British people can sing good enough to justify karaoke. <laughs> like, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Oh, really, really, just, yeah. just fucking awful. I remember hearing well, people karaoke people need to sort times. of rap, don't they, rather than actually sing. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's just not, not good. I, I think karaoke should be illegal in the UK. Whereas mm. in Japan, I, it's a rare thing to find a bad singer, or like a singer who... Mm you know, outright makes you want to leave the bar. Apart from when they're drunk, you know. Well, numerous of the times I used to go to snack bars up in Sakata after work, mm. and, you you know, there'd be a guy who's probably 60, and he's drank mm. all the whiskey, and he's slouched on a coach, uh, couch, and, mm. the, you know, two or three Japanese girls sat next to him, force a fucking karaoke mic into his hand and make him go... And just sort of butcher a song, and uh, I think because they make more money, they make more money if they do karaoke, or they they can upsell right. or something. So there's kind of an incentive to get the customers singing, make them stay longer, drink more, kind of thing, right? To the detriment of all other customers within the room. And uh, I don't miss those days listening to that kind of singing, not at all. Well, I, I remember doing it. I remember up in Sakata, me, you, and Natsuki doing. Um, well, in Senba, yeah. Actually. Do, yeah. Doing a song in a in a really cool bar, um, and I sang David Boy's "Let's Dance." I think. I think and, you, did, you did like um, Backstreet Boys song or something. Didn't you? Oh no, that was in a that was, that was in a smaller bar. I think that way. it was awful. <laughs> Fucking no, I did I did a pretty good rendition of David Boy's "Let's Dance." <laughs> Let's dance, um, and they. Um, and and people up did applaud. They didn't have to applaud. Oh, did they? That's now? all I'm saying. Oh, I think yeah. I did all right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> they were applauding with the wish, the dream that you'd sort of finish. I think it was kind of like a <laughs> optimistic applauding, shall we say? Um, but yeah, I remember it well. I remember it well. Good times. Good times. Um, we got a story this week from Eric from Arlington in America, and he says, Ooh. "Hello, Chris and Pete. In a recent episode, Pete mentioned Kamakura Beach." As a good side trip from Tokyo. I was at Kamakura Beach last week and it was very windy and Trotto overrated. I did say it's okay, like uh, Kamakura Beach, it's, it's, uh, 
Japanese beaches just aren't that good, are they? Like, people don't seem to be enjoying themselves that much. They only go out and sit on the beach when there's a lifeguard out, and that's like one day a mm. week. What's well, like one week in August, and so no, yeah, I, beaches I, in I, Japan I, are a bit disappointing, sadly. They're either they're either they're either really full or really deserted, and everyone's mm. just kind of not really having that gr- that great a time. One would suggest, but yeah, just it's the, uh, just, it's either too hot, or too cold, and uh, yeah, <laughs> Goldilocks of beach. Uh, that reminded me though, uh, says Eric. It reminded me of an incident that happened when I lived in Tokyo about ten years ago. My wife, my son, and I were living in downtown Tokyo for my work, and we often took day trips to escape the chaos of the city. One day, we decided to check out the beach in Kamakura. We packed our lunch and brought a beach ball and some boogie boards. While the beach isn't pristine, we had a good time playing in the waves and then sat down to eat our lunch. My wife pulled out our sandwiches, which were wrapped in shiny tin foil. No sooner had we unwrapped our delicious meals than we heard my son, who was four years old at the time, scream in terror. We looked over to see what looked like a massive dragon bird flying up into the sky, carrying my son's peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just as we realised what happened, another hawk dove down and snatched the turkey sandwich out of my wife's hands, scratching her wrists in the process. It was at that moment we realised our grievous error. The shiny tin foil was like a beacon to the hawks. They could probably see our meals from a kilometre away, and we gave them a perfect (laughs) target to dive bomb from high upon us. We quickly packed up our shiny food items, checked for additional damage and injury, and carried our petrified child off the beach and straight to the safety of the car. When we reached the car, we turned around and looked back at the beach. Not only did we see our son's favourite beach ball bounding quickly out to sea in the wind, uh, we also saw the massive signs posted along the beach entrance warning people in both Japanese and English to be aware of the hawks that circled the beach looking for food. We had my wife's scratch checked when we got back to Tokyo. Unfortunately, there was no infection, but the incident is a classic tale we often recite when friends ask how the beaches are (laughs) in Japan. The waves are great, the sand is nice, but check the signs and don't wrap your food in shiny tin foil. Keep up the work, guys. Keep up the good work. Eric from Arlington, (laughs) USA. And I know that story is real because when I shot there yesterday, uh, sorry, last week, there were two hawks in the air, like fucking UAV, mm. UA, like drones going around, predator drones waiting for someone to pull out a peanut butter jelly sandwich. So, yeah, that, now we know why nobody goes to the beach in Japan. The hawks are there. I have the hawks are there. It's it's happened to me one time, and it is it was in Sendai by a river, and it freaked me out because the speed at which they do it and the silence at which they come is just it's really impressive. You know, you just hear like this bass drop seconds before it. It arrives and snatches you here like... Like this whooshing. It's gone. That's such precision, such skill. But yeah, getting scratched by one, that, that's kind of scary as well. Yeah. No, they're just so large, aren't they? I mean, even like the crows are just like, like... They're just always kind of like hanging out around bins and stuff and just squawking. And I know like a lot of like lampposts and stuff emit like a, a high-pitched sort of sonar that upsets them. But yeah, like, yeah. they're still... Like the threat of birds is always there <laughs> wherever you are in Japan. <laughs> There's never zero. They're always watching. Tis true, tis true. <laughs> Crazy old birds. But on the subject of animals doing bad things in Japan this week, it's fitting that we have that story from Eric because this week's story is equally about animals doing things in the sea in Japan. Fill us in, Pete. What's been going on down in South Japan this week? Well, if you like your smooth, grey, slightly soggy mammals, we've got the story for you. Soggy Dolphin mammals. attacks. <laughs> Dolphins are attacking Chris in Wakasa Bay, uh, around 200 miles west of Tokyo. Dolphin attacks have injured at least 47 people since 2022. Many of them uh, suffered minor bites on their hands, but a few were rushed to hospitals with broken bones or wounds that needed uh, stitches. Um Scientists are spending a lot of time trying to get to the bottom of this. Hmm. Um, they think, though, that it might be the um, the work of just one single lonely male dolphin. Um, uh, one local man told media that he was swimming close to the shore when a dolphin bit his arm and tried to force itself on top of him, almost okay. pushing him underwater. Uh, since July 21st this year, another 16 people have been injured in dolphin attacks, mainly off the beaches uh, near Mahama uh, and nearby Turaga City. Um, two of them had serious hand injuries that needed dozens of stitches. Why have the dolphins come to shore is the question. Are they being aggressive or just playful? I might posit, Chris, that this lone male... It's just a bit horny. <laughs> horny, lonely wants... dolphins. Horny, lonely dolphin. Um, it's a, it's an interesting one. That apparently, um, 
it's the same like a lot of like the pictures of this attacking dolphin mm. have been the same male bottlenose indoor pacific dolphin um and it <laughs> it was observed trying to press its genitals against people so uh it's just when they're mating apparently dolphins can be very wild um lunging on top of a human could be a sexual act and a sign that it was just a bit just a bit lonely so uh yeah it's i mean it's it, it, apparently, a French town um, in 2018 temporarily banned swimming in the ocean after a lone male bottlenose dolphin, nicknamed Zafar, started exhibiting sexual behaviour, including rubbing itself against swimmers and Jesus. boats. So what we need is a fleet of uh, dolphin <laughs> dolls uh, in the water for them. Or just, I don't know, maybe paint the underside of your boats to make them a little bit look look a little bit more like a little lady dolphin, I think. <laughs> Bloody hell. I mean... I think, you know, my, my comments earlier about, like, people not going to the beach in Japan, there is a lot more just terror in the sea of Japan. <laughs> as we, Not just dolphins, but, you know, there's jellyfish, there's Portuguese man of war, the really painful mm. uh, jellyfish. There's the, the most horrible thing I saw was a video a year ago, I think, and it was in this same place. This was Fukui, um, which is on the Sea mm. of Japan coastline. The same sort of area. There was footage of a giant squid. They were not, you know, they're really close to the shore. And there was just a massive giant squid. And uh, I haven't been surfing recently. I'm a budding surfer. Not very good. I don't think I'd call myself a surfer. I flail around in the sea like a dickhead, basically. But, like, mm. uh, it does make me kind of go, do I want to go back in the sea? Dolphins, jellyfish, squid, and now hawks as well from the attacking from the air. It's a full-on assault, isn't it? The Japanese day trip to the Japanese seaside could end in disaster. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, like, like, I, like, I was, I was, I, when I was in uh, in um, Central America uh, last, uh, well, the Caribbean mm. uh, last year, I was pulled out the sea by a um, by a lifeguard who literally saved my life, um, and and so the sea for me has become recently quite dangerous and quite really? worrying and scary. Wait, um, you pulled so out the I'm sea? I'm not as into it as I used to be. Really? You didn't tell me that. It was like uh, it was Costa Rica um, last year. I, uh, I I swam out. I was, I was basically my last words to Sarah would have been, "Hey, ch- hey, Sarah, check out this, ch- check out this cool new move." Which I think, as last words go, is quite, is quite a funny one. Check out this cool new move. There was these big waves coming, like bigger than I've ever seen in my life, and I was like, I don't know why. I just didn't think of the danger, but I was just like fucking, like piling through them, going yeah, yeah. And I felt like I was going through time because the pressure of the waves coming, and then um, all I could hear was like a whistle. Of like the lifeguards, and uh, I sort of slowly realised I couldn't, I, I couldn't oh my get God. back. Basically, I was just out in this riptide. Jesus. And uh, and they say you should, and I, I, I'm not, I wasn't really, even though I'm from the seaside, I wasn't, never been a big swimmer. And uh, yeah, so a guy called Abraham pulled me out, and uh, I mean, you know, I was, I was treading water, but he swam, he dived in. He came all the way out. Yeah, there was there was two lifeguards on duty. One of them uh, was uh, an ogre like me. Uh, the one who came out to save me was uh, absolutely hench as hell. Huh. The most beautiful lifeguard you've ever. Seen. People went down the beach to check out this lifeguard. Um, Is this why you uh, tried he... to drown yourself? You wanted to hang out <laughs> with him. You wanted, <laughs> wanted Abraham to, hang to out pull with you out. Abraham, the uh, the lifeguard down in Costa Rica. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, help me, Abraham. It, who will help me? I, I think I think there's modern like in modern kind of parlance talking about like mental health and stuff. They do sort of say talk about your problems and uh, you know <laughs> all that because it'll come back and bite you on the bum. I have got this new plan of just not thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> and, until I see someone on telly drowning and I go I don't like that. <laughs> how do, I'm always curious like how lifeguards can physically pull someone out because of the weight, right? Like how did he? Not that you're a heavy guy, but like necessarily. It, but, but for me, it wasn't necessarily the. Um, he didn't pull me out, but he just gave me his float, ah. and and so we both got back because I just had, I just needed a float basically. I was just getting getting turned upside down, and I couldn't sort of maintain because it was just, there was just so many big waves. And ah. like once we got out, they did sort of say like two people drown every week on this beach. He's like, what's the fucking sign? I wouldn't have gone in then. Jesus. I wouldn't have fucking gone in. You met like. I was so angry. I, I, I had no right to be angry, but I was also a bit angry. I was like, well, I wouldn't have fucking gone in there, would I, if, if it was that dangerous? But I should have known because it was just massive waves and I just got pulled out and it was just, yeah, God, I mean, God bless that man who, wow. who saved me. It was a really uh, emotional yeah. day and I did drink a lot of whiskey afterwards. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and thank was, God uh, there was, was uh, there was no bottlenosed dolphins around to finish off Oh, that would have compounded things. Or maybe I could have roared... Oh, 
yeah. rode away back to the uh, to, to, to the Dolphins' domicile and had a, a, an interesting day. <laughs> an interesting oh. day of dolphin sex. <laughs> I'm not going to the sea any time soon after this this, this conversation. <laughs> no, My don't God. do it. My Promise. God. Oh. We'll be back in just a moment, guys. Your stories, comments and questions over <laughs> in the fax machine. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners? Mr. Dawson, fill us in. Hello, Jojo from Germany. Uh, dear Charming Chris and Pleasant Pete. Um, that's a downgrade, isn't it? Um, it's in October <laughs> this year. I'm finally going to travel to Japan for the first time. For most of my time there, I'm planning on staying in uh, Nishi Aizu Machi, Tohoku, west of Aizu Wakamatsu. Mm. Uh, Chris is a former citizen of the Tohoku region and advocate concerning northern Japan tourism. Are there any day trips in the region of Nishi Aizu or Aizu Wakamatsu? Uh, Wakamatsu that you can recommend thank you for both the podcast hours keep the good work Giorgio from Germany oh lovely I love that area I I keep wanting to go back there it's one of my favourite places in Tohoku we went there on uh, Mm. the recent series of Journey Across Japan non-stop north that's where like um, Natsuki and I went for the Kitakata Ramen you know the ramen town Mm. where it has more ramen shops per capita than anywhere in Japan one of my favourite episodes of the whole series Um, Natsuki incinerated his mouth for like the spiciest ramen (laughs) <laughs> in North Japan. <laughs> um, so yeah, go for a day trip to Kitakata, try the ramen, and there's like, I can't remember, I think there's like 80 shops in a pretty small town, and they all have their own variants. Too many shops. You know. That's too many shops, Chris. Nah, you can never <laughs> have enough shops. ramen. You can never have enough ramen. And um, <laughs> also near there, Aizu Wakamatsu has the Sazaido Temple, my, my favourite temple in North Japan. It's a, it's a temple that uses a helix structure, so... The stairways overlap each other, kind of like a strand of DNA. It's kind of a design that was plagiarized from Da Vinci, uh, Leonardo Da Vinci in Europe, actually. Um, mm. They stole it and they brought it back to Aizu Wakamatsu and they built it. And it is uh, an incredible temple. There's nothing else like it in the country. So do go and check that out. And also the Retro Showa 1960s Museum as well in Aizu Wakamatsu mm. is one of my favorites. It's a really nice yeah. place. But yeah, you're in for a treat there. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Have some ramen. Good awesome. luck. Uh, we've got one here from Thomas from Slovakia. He says, hi, Chris and Pete. One of the biggest things on the internet for many years has been uh, memes. Many of them are hilarious and also pretty absurd. But I want to know if this meme culture is also a thing in Japan. Um, if yes, what's popular in Japan? Are there any crossovers? Thank you for many hours of great entertainment. Thomas from Slovakia. And you know what? I don't actually know. I think the answer is not to the degree that we celebrate memes in the West. Um, do you have any knowledge of this, Pete? Do you know your memes in Japan? Uh, no, I think they're they're always very confusing. I don't really. I was watching. Um, there's uh, a, a, a wrestler in WWE who do, who has mm. a sister who does little comics and stuff. Uh, and I was looking at her stuff, and even with Google Translate, I, it, it's just so um, you just can't penetrate the kind of the hard permafrost of, of, of language and intent and meaning and stuff to, mm. to get there for me. It's, uh, yeah, it, I don't think there are many crossovers, are there? There's a really cool channel called Japanalysis. It's clever, that. Right. Japanalysis. Combine nice. two words there, Japan. Uh, well, they, um, he covered the greatest meme in Japan. Uh, mm. the, the video title is The Meme of Japan's Most Embarrassing Man. And it's so, it's so funny. It's about... Uh, no, Nonomura Ryutaro and he was a uh, kind of politician I think down in Hyogo um, mm. and it turned out he was uh, taking all these trips to places and having like a holiday but expensing them to uh, to his local government and being like oh I had to go for a business trip to this five star hotel and eat oysters and uh, uh, and when they sort of started questioning him on it there was no excuse he's just dicking about spending public money and he did this press conference and he cried in the most ridiculous way. He screamed and he cried. He was like, I was doing my best for Japan. <laughs> and it's so good. It's, and that became like the ultimate meme uh, around Japan. I remember seeing that far and wide. You know, they took this guy screaming, going, <laughs> and turned it into like a rap song and a music video. I watched that video. That's really good. And it's a, it's a decent channel, yeah. actually. Japan Analysis is, uh, is really good. Um, highly recommend you should check it out, Pete. You'll, you'll love that story. Uh, we've yeah, got one here from 
Uh, Rebecca and Josh, who says, Hello, Chris and Pete. My husband and I are travelling to Japan for the first time for two weeks from late September to early October this year. We're flying into Haneda and staying in Tokyo for three days before we venture south to Osaka. We're looking for an immersive experience between Osaka and Tokyo to experience an onsen ryokan and really good food. Any recommendations of towns and onsen around that way would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Rebecca and Josh. Uh, if you want an immersive experience, get yourself to Lost Bar in Shibuya. Yeah, my very yes. own bar, where you might see me and Natsuki drinking in the corner quietly. Or very <laughs> noisily. Um, there's lots of onsen towns along that route. The most famous, most popular one's Hakone, uh, which is really nice and uh, has a killer view of Mount Fuji on a good day. Uh, there's Atami, which is the coastal town. I nearly went to Atami for a shoot last week. We changed it last minute. But Atami is kind of this post-bubble era like faded glory town and it's they used to call it like the Monaco of Japan because it's in a bay has got towering buildings it does look kind of like a poor man's Monaco um, but it's not got the glamour of Monaco I think it might have done 20-30 years ago um but, uh, yeah, in the 1980s, 1990s, they built this place up when Japan had loads of money and people would yeah. go on day trips and weekend escapes from Tokyo. And then when the economy went off a cliff, so did the popularity of Atami. But what it means is these days you can stay there in a decent hotel with a private bath overlooking the sea for a very reasonable price. I think it was like $100 or $200 a night that I saw. Mm. Uh, you know, for your own private bath, which is quite kind of rare in Japan it's still quite expensive to do that you could stay there for like half the price of Hakone but you wouldn't get the killer view of Mount Fuji so swings and roundabouts but Atami and uh, Hakone are probably your best bet for you guys but uh, have a wonderful time in Japan and hopefully see you at Lost Bar if you do turn up but for now guys keep the stories questions comments coming in to everyone Japan podcast at gmail.com or right away on the comments below and uh, well we'll see you later in the week to do it all over again right back here on the Abroad Japan podcast. Stay away from the sea. Stay away from those sea beasts. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Aren't we all sea beasts? You are. Deep down. 